Magandang buhay! Welcome to Empowerment Technologies. We are now on week 3 of quarter 2. Kumusta naman kayo? Kayo ba ay kumain na? Nasa maayos bang ba inyong pakiramdam? Kung handa na kayo, pwede kayong kumuha ng ball pen, papel, at ang ating module o learning activity sheets para makasabay kayo sa ating lecture video. Alright, so ang ating lesson for this week is about developing an ICT project for social change. Okay, so we will develop an ICT project. So later on, I will discuss what kind of project we will gonna do. Okay, so for the background information, you will work with peers for the development of an ICT project that advocates specific social change or cause. When we say you will work with peers, that means this activity or ICT project will be done by group. Okay, ito ay uh, may collaboration. So here are some topics or advocacies that you can um, consider. But this is not just limited to anti-drug campaigns, youth election volunteer mobilization, animal welfare and rights, environmental conservation and action, and some contemporary ICT issues such as cyberbullying, copyright infringement, green technology, and internet addiction. Okay, so ito lang ay pwede ninyong i-consider. Pero kung may maisip pa kayong ibang advocacies na gusto ninyong gawa ng ICT project, walang problema. Okay, so before we develop this ICT project, we have steps. Okay, meron tayong proseso dyan. Alright, so step 1, planning and conceptualizing an ICT project for social change. So when we plan and conceptualize, Meron tayong guide questions dyan. Bakit kaya dinaan sa guide questions ang planning and conceptualizing? Well, ito kasi ay isang magandang strategy na kung saan makakapag-come up tayo ng mas maayos na output o outcome. Because our brain is more receptive if the topic is converted into a question. ba? So, like this one. What are some sample advocacies in the field of academic or TVL. So, kung ikaw ay YUMS, STEM, GAS, ikaw ay under the academic track. So, kung ikaw naman ay TVL, ito yung mga uh, kumukuha ng housekeeping, food and beverage services, bread and pastry production, um, what else? Uh, automotive servicing, computer system servicing, and many more. Number two, guide question. What is it that you want to change in your community? Okay. Ano sa tingin mo ang kailangang mabago sa ating community? Dahil nakakakita ka ng problema. Number three, is there something that many people ignore because either they have become accustomed to taking things for granted or because they think that things cannot be changed? Number four, what is it that you feel strongly about the academic or TVL track that you think can contribute something to create a change? So, etong mga questions na to ay makakatulong sa atin sa pagpaplano at mag-conceptualize kung ano talagang advocacy ang i-apply natin sa ating ICT project. Okay. So, here is an example of a local or regional cause or issue for social change. Okay, so it can be the lack of centralized market for local products and services. So, ang nakita daw na problema dito ay lack of centralized market para sa local products and services. Okay, so ano naman ang sample solution natin para dyan? Well, it is to create a bridge between producers and consumers through ICT. So, medyo napapanahon ito, di ba? Kasi, Sa panahon ng pandemya, mas nag-boom ang online business. Right? Okay. So, such an ICT platform can provide the interface where local producers and service providers can advertise their products and services. So, consequently, the community will have centralized market 
where they can present the varied choices of products and services available to the community. Aside from the economic aspects, such as a website can contribute to creating a common ground of, or forum and encourage a mindset where local residents strengthen and expand their market to nearby towns. Well-established companies and restaurants and even the foreign markets instead of competing with each other. Diba? Magandang example ang paggawa ng website para maging common ground o forum ng mga seller at buyers. Diba? Okay. So, let's go on now to step 2. Research for ICT projects, audience profiling, or ito yung demographics and psychographics. Okay? So, sa step 2, magkakaroon tayo ng audience profiling. So, ano nga ba ito? This is essential ha, to understand exactly who your audience is. You can define a target group to focus your project on those most likely to complete the goals you want them to. Okay? So, for example, balik tayo sa advocacies natin. So, for example, anti-drug campaign ang advocacy na gagamitin niya sa ICT project. Sino ba ang ating target audience para dito? Oh, so, halimbawa naman sa Youth Election Volunteer Mobilization, sino ang magiging target audience natin dito? Siyempre, ang mga kabataan or pwede rin ang ating mga SK officials. Okay, next, Animal Welfare and Rights. So, ang ating pwedeng maging audience dito is yung mga animal lovers, yung mga may pet shop, what else, yung mga uh, nang a-adapt ng mga pets, ganyan. Okay. So, audience profiling is now widely accepted as the only effective way to gather the insights need to define segment and profile their consumers or users. No? Widely accepted na to ang audience profiling. So, later on, paano ba ginagawa ito? Didiscuss natin. So, without this, we will not be able to understand who the specific audience is so or how to reach them in maximum impact. So, napapansin nyo ngayon sa mga online, meron ng mga online surveys, meron ng mga poll, o kaya naman yung mga feedback forms, ganyan. So, online surveys are a great way to engage your audience and get feedback from them. You can use online surveys in any number of ways, including to find out what topics you re your readers want to learn more about. So, ito yung mga karaniwang ginagawa sa mga online surveys. Get product feedback. Conduct market research. Get customer service feedback. Gauge employee satisfaction. And many more. Alright, so here are some survey tools available online. Sogo Survey, Survey Monkey, Type Form, Google Forms, Client Heartbeat, Zoho Survey, Survey Gizmo, and Survey Planet. Pero kung meron na kayong Google account, pwede kayong gumawa sa Google Form. Later on, I will show you how to do it, the basic way on how to uh, make a survey tool. So, may guide questions tayo syempre. Para dito sa survey tool natin. How can the advocacy or website or web page help the community? Who are the target audience, users, and collaborators of this advocacy? Target audience, sila ang sasagot sa survey tools. Users, ito ang mga admin o gumagawa ng survey tool. Collaborator, it can be your teammate na kung saan pwede siyang mag-contribute din ng question at uh, mag-collect din ng data from your survey tool. Okay? So, how will the users of this website respond to a call to action? Makakadulong din ang mga guide questions na to para magawa natin ang survey tools ng maayos. Okay, so I will just skip step 3 and 4 kasi i-discuss natin yan sa susunod nating video. Bago tayo sumagot sa ating activities, bibigyan ko kayo ng 30 seconds to have a health break. Pwede kayong pumunta sa comfort room, uminom ng tubig, at mag-stretching.
activities. For activity number one, so I'll just read the directions. Your teacher will divide your class into groups, maximum of four members each group. You need to collaborate and develop an ICT project for social change. Discuss the following during your virtual meeting and fill out the needed information. Magugrupo kayo niyan, four members each group lang. Okay? Your teacher will just post the groups in your GCs or in your Google Classroom para malaman nyo kung sino ang inyong mga kagroupmate. And then, you will have your virtual meeting para mapag-usapan ninyo kung ano yung mga nandito. Local or regional cause or issue for social change that can be addressed or tackled using an ICT project. Issue, ha? Issue or cause. Ano ba yung mga nakita nating problema na kailangan na ma-address o matugunan man lang, di ba? Through advocacy kasi, pwede itong isang maging tool para tayo ay magkaroon ng paglilinaw sa mga issue na ito. Next, solution that can contribute to the community. Ano ba ang mga proposed solutions ninyo doon sa issue o cause na napag-usapan ninyo? Okay? So, dito sa inyong learning activity sheet, bawat miyembro, iisa lamang dapat ang maging sagot ninyo dahil yun ang napag-meetingan ninyo virtually. Okay, so let's proceed to activity number two. So this is the continuation. During your virtual meeting, you will formulate questions to find out what courses of action the users or members of the site or the page are willing to do. Okay, so review the guide questions in step two, audience profiling. Yun yung demographics and psychographics. Dito sa activity 2, gagawa na kayo ng online survey tool. You will choose which of these online survey tools will you use. Eto. Pili kayo. Okay? So, para sa akin, kung may Google account na kayo agad, pwedeng Google Form na lang ang gamitin ninyo. Okay? So, madali lang yan. Let's go back to activity 2. And write the link or URL in the box. Inside the box. And then dito sa baba, ilalagay natin yung online survey tool to be used. So, take the following information you need in your online survey tool. Gusto ko sa survey tool natin, merong name, address, sex or gender, may age, sa contact number, optional na lang. And kung meron pa kayong gustong itanong ng mga basic uh, information. Next, what are the questions you will post in your online survey tool as discussed and agreed? So, dun sa virtual meeting ninyo, mag-aano rin kayo, mag-formulate din kayo ng mga questions na hindi lang ito nasasagot ng yes or no. Na hindi lang ito nasasagot ng uh, simple. So, dapat meron din doon particular questions na kung saan may ambag doon sa inyong advocacy. So, last part na yata ito, guide questions. How can ICT be a tool in connecting all stakeholders in your community? You will answer this individually na. What are the implications of your community having a virtual counterpart? So, this is the rubrics for assessment. Reflection. What have I learned in this lesson? Okay, so and that's all for week 3. Ito ang mga steps para tayo ay makagawa ng survey gamit ang Google Forms. Mag-open lamang ng inyong browser at ilog in ang inyong Gmail account. Tignan natin sa ating Google Apps ang Google Forms. Kung hindi ninyo makita ito dito sa site, maaari nating i-type ang docs.google.com slash forms. At lalabas na ang interface ng Google Forms. Ngayon, gagawa tayo ng isang survey. Piliin natin ang start a new form blank. Halimbawa, ang ating advocacy is about animal 
rights, and welfare. Lagyan na lamang ng mga description for additional information. So, dito sa pagdadagdag ng question, diba, ang una kong sinabi na hinahanap natin doon sa ating audience profiling, kailangan may basic information muna. Alamin natin ang pangalan ng ating audience. So, name, lalagay mo dyan. And then, hindi siya multiple choice. Ilalagay lang natin as short answer. Kapag naka-tick or kapag naka-select ang required, ibig sabihin hindi nila pwedeng laktawan ang tanong na ito. Next. Address. Ganun ulit. Short answer. Add question. sa kanilang sex o gender. So, dito, since babae at lalaki, male or female lang, iselect natin female and male. Magiging multiple choice na yan. Susunod, age. Kapag sinabi nating age, ito ay sasagutin nila bilang number. Sa una nating tanong, pwede tayong magtanong ng mga close-ended questions. Yung mga nasasagot ng yes or no. Halimbawa, Do you have a pet? Yes or no? Ang kanilang pwedeng isagot. Dahil kailangan nating mag-stick dito sa ating topic o dito sa ating advocacy. So, kaya natanong natin kung meron siyang pet. Magbigay din tayo ng mga open-ended questions para ang ating target audience ay magbigay ng reasons. Halimbawa, what Will you do if you found a lost animal? Okay, so dito, pwedeng paragraph na ang sagot niya dyan. At tuloy-tuloy na yan hanggang sa mabuo ninyo ang inyong mga questions. Para naman maibigay ang link sa ating target audience, I-click lamang ang send dito sa upper right part. Pwedeng kopyahin ang ating URL. At ito ang isi-send natin sa kanila. To shorten this URL, click lamang para medyo umikli. Copy. And then, i-send nyo na sa ating target audience or i-post nyo na sa inyong website or webpage. Kung meron kayong katanungan, pwede kayong mag-message sa Facebook or Messenger, even sa ating Google Classroom. And abangan ang susunod nating lecture video for week 4. Okay? So hanggang dito na lang muna. Paalam!